you want some cards? <laughs> He's a sneaky little sneak. He comes in and he thinks I won't see him. I see you. You know better. I'll sniff you out. You know better than that. <laughs> what are you doing, friend? What are you doing? We're on late tonight. My boys took me out to dinner and mama had a margarita. So I was like, fuck it. Let's go live. <laughs> it was a good dinner. It was fun. What are you up to? Anything exciting? I am doing card pulls. Yep, I am. Crazy, but I just had something in the kitchen lift up and drop. Ooh, sounds like someone's trying to get your attention. So funny thing about that, those silly spirits trying to get your attention. I have to ask you a question um, about your dad. So like your mom had been bugging me for a couple of days before I was able to get in contact with you. Um, I had a male energy and I don't know if this is him or not, but I had a male energy with me for about a day or so. And he... He's tall. I mean, I'm short. I'm 5'4". So he, I want to say he's around 6 foot to 6 foot 2-ish. Um, I feel like he's got pretty broad shoulders. Let's see what else if I can get his image to come back into my mind. But I kept getting a T name and it sounded kind of like Tim. And then I got like a Rob. So Tim or Rob. I don't know if either of those are significant to you at all. But um, I feel like this male was tall broad shoulders um he seemed kind of like not thin to me but like um i'd say like kind of an athletic build like he wasn't super big anywhere that i could really tell and he was um kind of pacing when he came through he was just kind of pacing around and i tried to you know talk to him energetically and everything and he was real shy about it he didn't really want to step forward i feel like he knew that i could see him but he just wasn't ready to really come forward and i don't know why that doesn't happen too often with me but i was getting distinctly two names that sounded like tim and rob and I could kind of vaguely see him. So I don't know if, if um, that happens to be your dad or not, but I feel like there was a little bit of a disconnect with communication with him prior to him passing. And I feel like um, there were some things left unsaid with somebody. I don't know if it was you or if it was siblings, but I feel like there was some sort of um like emotional disconnect that may have been resolved or may not have and i don't know for sure but he came through really quiet where mom was really really chatty dad was not if this is your dad it could be somebody else but i have had two energies that have been um around for the last like week and a half um one was a really heavy walker like um i was home alone um, there was no one else in the house. The animals were asleep and it sounded like really heavy boots, like walking through my house. And then one of my sons heard walking when no one was home. And then my stepson heard what sounded like footsteps walking when no one was home. Really heavy, heavy footsteps. So I don't know if he had like heavy footsteps when he walked or if this is another person's energy that's coming through, but definitely some oddball things going on. Recently started being dad and son again in the last seven years. Good. So that is a good thing because um, they keep giving me the word closure. So I'm hoping that that happened for you. I hope you got closure and that there wasn't this huge rift because I, I felt like there was distance. And again, this could have been a while ago or this could have been something more recent and I don't really know, I don't have a timeline on that, but felt like there was this discord for a while. Like you maybe weren't on speaking terms, you didn't really see each other very much. Maybe one of you lived far away, things like that. He had secrets that he only shared with me. So some closure. Okay. So like, you know, deathbed confessions, things like that. Um, 
I just want to see if there's any other stuff that comes through with that energy before I try and disconnect from it. There's something to do with, he's showing me like a shoreline it looks like. Like I feel like I'm looking at a beach. Um, and I'm seeing seagulls. I don't know why seagulls would be significant. Obviously they're around the ocean and the coastline and stuff. But I see a seagull very clearly in my mind. I feel like I see two people walking on the beach and I see like the seagulls kind of flying around, swirling around these people. Definitely feel like there's a male energy, but I'm not sure who the second person is. I don't see like buildings around. I don't really see other people, just the two people and the seagulls. So I'm not sure why that would be significant at all. Possibly took him and my mother to Hawaii six years ago. Okay, well, there would be the two people at the beach then. Were there seagulls all over the place when you went? I love the beach too. I would love to just go hang out at the beach. Um, let's see if there's anything else. So this is a random question. Were your parents still married at the time of their passing or had they divorced? Mom was feeding the sea. Come on, Justin. <laughs> okay. All right. So that makes sense. Not married. Okay, so that might be the distance that I was picking up on because I feel like there was a big disconnect between him and the rest of the family, and I feel like it went on for a long time, like years. Really strongly feel that. But I feel like they were also still good friends. Does that make sense? Like, even though they weren't together, I feel like they were still very good friends because I feel like they were soulmates. They divorced when I was nine and I feel my dad missed their marriage. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense for what I pick up. Um, it's almost like, you know, people go through things in life where they think, oh, it'll just be easier if I'm not with this person. And then they have like this lifetime of regret and things that they feel like they missed out on. And I feel very much that he had this sadness about missing out on things, you know, like he might still have been active in you guys' lives and whatever, but I feel like he thought that he really missed out on a lot of things that he should have been there for. So I feel like that was something that he carried with him for a very long time. I feel like later in life he made peace with it, but I feel like as a younger man, he definitely carried a lot of that with him. So, um... Did he have like a goofy hat, like a goofy fishing hat or something? Because I feel like I'm looking at, um, I don't even know what those are called. It's got like a brim all the way around it. I think they're fishing hats. It's got like the, the rim all the way around it. And it looks kind of silly to me. It's something that you would wear if you know you're going to be out in the sun for a while. I don't know if he had something like that, but the image that he's showing me right now is like this goofy hat that he's got on. He had a hat he wore on the ranch that had fluffy ears that came down. Okay, goofy hat, yep. Um, was it like the like the winter hat that had, I don't know why I call them mud flaps, but like the flaps on the ears that would come down? Because I feel like something moves over here. 
to stay warm in the winter, right? Like you'd wear the flaps so you could lift one up if you needed to hear better, but otherwise it's to protect your ears. Mm hmm Yeah, okay. Goofy hats, right? I, that always reminded me of, um, gosh, what was that guy's name? Ernest P. Worrell. He was a comedian. I don't know. I can't remember what the heck that show would have been called. I'm showing my age. It was, I want to say it was popular in the 80s or the 90s. And um, he had a hat like that. I swear he did. And I always thought it was the goofiest looking hat. And it always made me laugh every time I saw it. You called him Ernest? Come on. See, spirit shows me things for a reason. <laughs> Ernest goes to camp. Yep, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. Um, was he kind of slim like him? Kind of slim like Ernest? Because I feel like he was tall and kind of lanky. Tall and skinny. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like he had kind of like broad shoulders, but he wasn't, he wasn't big, you know, like he didn't have like a big belly or anything on him. I feel like he was lean, like kind of an athletic build. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see what else is he showing me. So like your mom came through super, super clear. Like she just kept rattling off stuff. And your dad, it took him a while. Like, I feel like he kind of was like, I don't know if I want to, <laughs> I don't know if I want to tell her anything. Like, he was a little bit stubborn, a little hesitant, a little shy. But he's he's warming up. He's starting to show me stuff, so that's good. Um, do the names Tim or Rob mean anything to you? The other day at 4.22 a.m., we had doors open and slam woke us up. Ooh. We've had some weird stuff happen here the last couple of days, too, that I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I thought, you know, is, is there like lingering energy from a reading that I did or is it is it something else like loud noises out of nowhere? We've had weird things like that going on, too. Like, what was it the other day? It sounded like something popped, almost like a loud popping sound. And I'm looking everywhere like, what the heck was that? No idea. Tim. Dad's uncle passed the week before my dad. Okay, we got a Tim. That was very clear. I heard the name Tim very, very clear like three days ago. I was like, I don't know who Tim is, but um, mental note, Tim. Let's see. And Rob. Do you know a Rob, Robert, Bobby? Rob, Robert, Bobby. Rob was the other name that was coming through. So this would be your great uncle, Tim. Well, hi there, music lover. We could use all the love we could get. We're always welcome to that. Had popping noises happen a lot lately at the gallery. Almost like um, like glass shattering. Yes! <laughs> See, I couldn't have even predicted that. He typed it and I said it. Love that. So yeah, like glass shattering, almost like a light bulb exploding or something, or it sounds like something popped and cracked. Mm hmm Yes, not sure of a Rob, that's okay. Let's see what else was coming through. They're showing me what looks like, um, a drinking glass that you would put like scotch or something in like maybe he liked to have cocktails I feel like I'm looking at a glass and there's like this big ice cube in it and then they're pouring a little bit of liquor in there but I can hear the ice hit the glass and then I can see the liquor being poured so not sure if dad liked to have a little liquid libation, um, but somebody definitely is pouring like a glass. Wasn't a big drinker, but his uncle Tim was. Okay, all right. Well, family reunions, you know. You know how it goes, Justin. We tend to pull a few of them at a time. It's never just one of them. They're like, oh, everybody's saying, hey, all right, well, come on down. Let's go, let's talk. Um, 
What else? Who who else has the mic tonight? Who else wants to talk? We'll see. Is there an Annette in the family? Anne or Annette? Now it sounds like Annie. Annie and Annette. A name that sounds like Annie, Anne, or Annette. Poor Justin, he's like, I can't type fast enough, lady. Hold on. <laughs> My chat freeze again. <clears throat> if not, no big deal. I'm just hearing all these names, so I figure I'll let you let you know what they are. So Annie, Anne, or Annette, if there's any of those that you can think of, Justin. If not, that's okay, we'll move forward. Lori Ann, okay. Is this, um, how are you related to that person? First cousin, okay. So would this be on dad's side of the family or mom's side of the family? I'm trying to figure out which direction they're pulling me here. Mom's side, okay. They're giving me a lot of names tonight, Justin. Rebecca. Is there a Rebecca, Becky, Rebecca, or Becky? A great friend, Becky. Okay. So, um, I feel like dad was a little hesitant to step forward, but I feel like, um, he's really like, he's making a good transition. If that makes sense, what I'm saying, he's at peace. I feel like I can see mom's energy again. Um, it's like things are starting to fall into place in his world now and so, as you and I have discussed, you're trying to get back into the swing of things. But he's also kind of, like, giving me this motion of, like, slow down. So, he's telling you to take your time and to have patience. But I also feel like um, it comes in time, if that makes more sense. So, like, none of this is an overnight fix. None of this is something that you're going to process through quickly. And you got a double, double whammy because both of them happened so close together. So you really need to be patient with yourself. You need to not take on so much, Mr. Capricorn, Mr. Workaholic. You need to slow down. You need to give yourself some time to actually process these emotions because um, that's a lot on anyone's plate. And then, you know, you factor in the rest of life on top of that, like work and responsibilities and other family responsibilities and things. And then it's like you reach the point of no return of overwhelm. And that causes burnout. That causes like a whole slew of problems that you really just don't want. So please take really good care of yourself. Dad is nodding. He's like, yes, listen, please take good care of yourself. Um, both of them are coming through with like big smiles on their faces. 
I feel like um, they both get a chance to kind of be together on the other side as best friends or anything else. And um, they're showing me something else. Let me see what this is. Oh, that's so cute. They're showing me um, the two of them in a convertible driving off into the sunset. That is so precious. I love that. Mom's got on a big hat. Dad's driving. She's got on like big sunglasses, a big hat. And they're like waving. That reminds me of a scene in a movie. I think it was Grease. Like the final scene of Grease with Sandy and whatever John Travolta's character where she's like waving to everybody and they're like driving off together they look like two kids two young kids like in love driving off into the sunset <laughs> I love that that is so precious oh yeah very positive energy Love it. Mom loved her convertible, right? And the siblings fighting over the will. Oh, good gosh. Yeah, um, that happens in a lot of families. Unfortunately, it happened in mine, too. Um, sometimes it's just like you just got to do what you can do, you know, let them squabble about it later or whatever. But um, the day to day stuff is what they're referring to that, like, they want you to just slow down. They don't want you to overwork yourself. They don't want you to take on more than you can handle right now that you need some downtime too. So no being a workaholic right now, unless it's absolutely necessary. You need to do things that allow you time to grieve, that allow you time to just kind of process all of this stuff. And if you're constantly busy and you're constantly overwhelmed, you're not actually dealing with this. You're actually shoving the emotions down, which is blocking your spiritual gifts. I can promise you that. So <clears throat> as painful as the pe feelings can feel, you need to sit with them little by little over time. If the waterworks come up to the surface, let it flow. Let it out. Journal if you want to journal, like we were talking about the music, the binaural beats, things like that. Do those things. I promise you they're going to help you along the healing process. And it might take you six months or a year. It might take you five years before you really feel like you're in a good place. That doesn't fucking matter. It's nobody's timeline but yours for healing. So you just got to focus on the next five minutes and then the next hour and then before you know it you've made it through another week and it's like okay I can fucking do this it's gonna be okay so big squishy hugs to you my friend I love you I am so sorry that you're dealing with all of this stuff but you know I'm always here if you need to talk so mom and dad are good I feel like they're two happy little kids in love right now it's so cute it's so precious that they're showing us that um I feel like they're having kind of like a family reunion over there. You know, like there's a lot of people that are in spirit in your family. And I feel like they all kind of congregate and have, oh, sorry, have parties on the other side. Tomorrow's Mother's Day, you know. So while that's a sore subject for a lot of us because my mom's in spirit too, it's a hard day for me. Um, she's very, very happy. Like, do not be surprised if oddball shit does not happen to you tomorrow. Because mom's, you know, mom is around. We, <laughs> we made that clear the last time when mom showed up. Mom is very much around, especially at the gallery. She said that is one of her favorite places to hang out. So mom is very, very active over there. It would not surprise me if dad is also hanging out over there. Because it's a happy place. It's good energy. You know what I mean? So, um... They're telling me perfume, something to do with you might catch a whiff of like mom's perfume or something silly. And she's like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, so she wants you to know she's around. Like she's not trying to be quiet about it. She's like, hello, do you see me? Like she's very much active when she wants to be. So uh, I feel like you will slowly start to feel dad's presence around. I get the sense that dad might um, 
dad might be more loud about things like the heavy footsteps or the knocking sounds, the glass weird sounds, things like that. Those might be more dad than mom, but I feel like mom does um, goofy stuff to like moves things around to make you look for them. <clears throat> but they're, they're both doing things. So <laughs> you will start to see that if you haven't already. My favoriteest, aw, shanks. But yeah, they're definitely around you guys. So um, just be open. You know, I tell you guys that all the time. Just be open to how they come through, what they have to say or what they're trying to show you. And <clears throat> while you might feel a little bit stifled in your gift right now, you're going through a refining process. And I had the same thing happen when my mom passed away was I felt like I couldn't hear spirit anymore. I felt like my intuition was blocked. I felt like I couldn't remember my dreams at all for like six to eight months. It was grief. And so grief is something that really blocks a lot of energy flowing through us. It's not that it's not happening. It's just that we're so overwhelmed by those emotions because they're so heavy that we have to start to kind of heal a little bit before we hear a lot of the stuff that we probably would be hearing otherwise. So give yourself that time. If you would like, I would love to start doing some exercises with you remotely to see if we can um, get those things to kind of wake up a little bit when you're ready. So you just email me and we'll discuss some of those things. But um, I have some things that might help. So if you would like to do that, we can even video call if you want to do that. Um, and I will help you because you have a gift that needs to be shared. And I feel like this is your catalyst. And I wish it came in better packaging. But I feel like big tragic trauma is always what wakes up our spiritual gifts and so you losing both mom and dad a month apart is a hundred percent that you know and so it's time for you to like refine your gifts and to um, deepen your spiritual practices and to start really either choosing to go in that path where you're going to use these gifts or you're sometimes lose them like, not that you would lose them totally, but like they're less active. And I've seen that happen. So that would be what I would suggest is that, um, you know, give it some time. But when you're ready, just email me and let me know. And then we'll chit chat and we'll we'll go over some things because you have such a strong gift. And Justin has read for me for filth a few times just out of nowhere. Like I didn't even know Justin until a few months ago. And all of a sudden one day he was in a live and he's asking me questions like, hey, do you know a certain so-and-so? And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I do. That's my great grandpa. No one's ever picked him up. And just crazy things like that. So um, Justin really does have a gift and we need all those healers out there in the world to be active. So really important. So anyways, long story short, you let me know when you're ready and we'll start doing some of those. And some of them are really easy. Like um, there's things that we could do where I write something down or I draw something on a piece of paper and you try and see what I have without actually seeing it. And I would love to go on an investigation together. Speaking of those, I did one today. So the full version is on YouTube. I uploaded um, a good chunk of it here on TikTok tonight too. So that would be the latest video that's out. It's about 28 minutes long. So if you guys are curious, watch it. We did capture a couple of things from Spirit on there. So that was a lot of fun. I went by myself to a local cemetery tonight. Um, I went and saw my boyfriend's parents are at that cemetery, took some flowers to mom. And then um, I went and did my investigation. I think I was there about two hours. It was a while. And so yeah, that's on the channel if you guys would like to watch it. Stephanie says, I've watched Justin a few times. Yeah. So he was just a face in the crowd before um, he started like doing this stuff and coming to lives. And he has been a really good friend. And I'm so excited that um, he allows me to read him publicly like this because it's a really vulnerable thing and he's gone through a lot. And so he needs all the extra loves, guys. So give Justin some loves because he lost both his mom and his dad recently. So. Um, his mom came through, what was it, like a couple weeks back 
wasn't it shortly after she passed that she came through Justin and then um, I had this male energy with me for the last couple of days and so I was like I don't know if this is his dad or if this is someone else but I figured I'd mention it and see if it was because you know every time Justin is around I seem to pick up information so I feel like we are meant to interact with each other that we're meant to help each other in some way shape or form so we got to right <laughs> Never seen him read. He did it. Um, it's been several months, I think, but he pulled out information that not one person would have guessed. Not one person would have ever even known. Really specific stuff. So um, even I was blown away because it's not often that someone reads me just randomly, you know. Um, and it seems like every time Justin comes in, I start picking up information from him not trying to just it's just there and um so we kind of do it back to each other at any given time it just whenever it's there we're just both open and so it's easy to just read each other yeah it was extremely close together so he emailed me and let me know when both of them had passed away and so I'm always like sending energy to people especially if I know they're going through something because I feel like we could all use a little bit of a boost there things like that oh we totally feed off each other's energy it's crazy and so Justin and I have never met each other face to face like he lives in Texas and I live in Colorado um, but we have a lot of crazy stuff in common, I think, and so it's just really kind of cool to have somebody that's, um, that's able to do those things too, because I don't really have friends like that in my everyday world that do what I do and things like that, so it is kind of a neat thing. How do you get a reading? Do you want tarot? Because mediumship, I'm not doing during the live. That was just kind of a fluke. I had to ask him some questions, and I didn't know if, if I was actually picking up his family or if I wasn't. But you can book a mediumship reading with me. You just have to email me to do that, and I do them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I do something called spirit-led during a live, but it's pretty late here tonight.